The next tool or technique or strategy, whatever you want to call it, has to do with showing an output example. So it's kind of tied to what we just saw, uh, end shot, one shot, few shot prompting. But end shot prompting is about showing an input and a corresponding output. Sometimes I just want to give it a template for the, the output format. If I want some specific output format, there's ways I can do this without having to show the relationship between an input and an output. So I think it's easiest if I just show this. Uh, let's ask it to generate me a song, a playlist of songs. Generate me a playlist, let's zoom in a bit, of 10 songs to play while I sail around the world. I'd love to sail around the world one day. That's the plan. Not there yet. So if I just hit enter, it's going to come up with some format. And it's likely going to have, yeah, sale and that's the, the song and then the artist ocean eyes by billy eilish it better have southern cross in here that's a quintessential circumnavigation song anyway uh it has the song title and then the word by and then the band or the artist if i want a, a different format for some reason the search tool i'm using or spotify or whatever has a particular format i'm going to stop this generating what i could do is show it that format so I'll edit my prompt, and I can simply say, you know, uh, use this format for each song. And then I can write the format. There's a couple of options for how I do this. A lot of people like to do this where they use angle brackets to signify replace this with a song title. So maybe I want something like this, um, you know, hello, and then the year. I don't know when Adele's Hello song came out. I have no idea. And then I can have the artist. Let's suppose this is the format I want. The song title, then in parentheses, the year, then a dash, or maybe we'll even get fancier. For some reason, I want an arrow. And then I want the artist name. So I can show it exactly that format. Here's the song title, and then I'll put parentheses. And in those parens, I'll write song year, or even just release year or year. It's pretty smart. It can figure out what I mean by this. And then I'll do an arrow, and then I'll have artist. So unlike the previous video, I'm not showing it an input and a corresponding output. I'm just giving it basically a template. Use this basic format. And let's see what happens. There we are. Come sail away and then in parentheses the year, and then a random arrow, and then the artist name. And, oh, there we go, Southern Cross, 1982 in parentheses, an arrow, and then Crosby, Stills, and Nash. So that's a simple example. Uh, I can do this in many different formats. You can often get away by just doing this as well. It's It can figure out what you want. You know, I could probably just do title, and then year, in parentheses, an arrow, and then artist, and it will still give me the same format still works just fine but a lot of people like to use those angle brackets just to make it clear maybe also to other users that it's uh, a variable or it's supposed to be replaced so let's look at one more example of providing a, a template for the output i'm going to ask it to generate me some sample data maybe uh some t five fake users and i want each user to have like a name and an email and maybe uh, a birth date and different pieces of data. Maybe I wanna use this for an application I'm building, some testing purposes. So I could start by saying, generate me five sample users. Maybe I'll just start with that. Generate me five sample users. Let's see what it gives us. So age, occupation, interests, location, and it's giving it to me in a numbered list. So I'm gonna stop it. And I have more specific things that I want. So of course I could say generate me five sample users. Each user should have an age and occupation, interest and location. But I can also just show an example according to this format. And then I can have a basic format where I'll say, you know, first name, colon, last name, colon, email, and what else? Maybe birth date. Just showing it that basic format that I want is enough. And it will generate me five users according to that format. And it gives me a disclaimer saying these aren't real people. But there we go. First name, last name, email, and birth date. But 
maybe I actually want this to work with code. So if you're not a developer at all, it doesn't matter, but I could ask it to generate me a code friendly format. So I'll tell it to generate me five sample users as JSON. Again, not a big deal if you don't know JSON. And I'll say each user should follow this format. And then what I can do is just write a little bit of JSON, basically I wrap this in curly braces and I'll, I'll indent this just to make it look like, whoops, look like JSON. And you'll see that it gives me a slightly different result now. Perfect. So now it's giving me a JSON array of individual user pieces of information, user objects. I could take this and use it in some programming language like JavaScript or Python. So it doesn't matter if you don't know code, but simply providing this template here without showing a true example, right? I'm not saying here's an input, here's an output. It still is very effective just to show it the general format that I want my output in. And that can be some super specific, really niche output, or it could be something that's pretty obvious and you can just put it in there to guarantee that you get that format. Because sometimes you'll run the same prompt, like I've asked it for a playlist a couple of times without providing a format, and it will change the order. Sometimes it does the song and then the year, then the artist, sometimes it doesn't include the year at all. But if I give it the exact format, I can get some repeatable output.